In this video, we're going to look at doing the area of a circle, radius r, using slicing and definite integrals. So first thing we do is we put in our ith slice. I'm going to do it horizontal. You could just as easily do it vertical. And right there is my ith slice. And one thing we can do with the circle is we can pretend it's on a x and y axis, cutting right through and with the center being at the origin. You don't have to, but sometimes it, it can help with the labeling. So what I need is the area of that ith slice. Now remember we give all the slices the same width, so that's my delta y because I'd be slicing horizontally. And now I start to come up with the area of the ith slice and that's where we're going to start to see what our formula is going to look like. Well. If I look this way, it's a rectangle, and that's what we want from our slice. It's going to be delta y. Now, from here to here is x sub i. It's the x, it's the x value for that slice. So the total would be 2x sub i. So currently, my area is 2x sub i delta y. What you should notice at this point is we have an x in here and a y, and we don't want uh, both variables in there. So we'd like to come up with a relationship between x and y. So this one, you know, you'll start to know what to look for, but what we could see in this one is if I drop in a line right here and a line right here, I've got a right triangle. This is a radius, so that's r. This is y sub i, and we know that that's x sub i. So I know that r squared equals x sub i squared plus y sub i squared for any slice I make in this triangle. Now we wanted to sub for x sub i, so I'm going to solve that for x sub i. So x sub i is the square root of r squared minus y sub i squared. So that's going to go in and then we're going to be able to start this uh, integral. So it's 2 times the square root of, remember that capital R, notice it doesn't have a sub i, it's not a variable, it's a constant, it would be given, minus y sub i squared delta y. Now I'm not going to go through all the steps, but our next step would be to create a Riemann sum, which we'll just briefly look at, you know, i equals 0 to n of this part here, so 2 times square root of r squared minus y sub i squared delta y. And what we would do is we take the limit as n goes to infinity to make it our continuous case. So here comes our definite integral. It's going to be 2 minus the square root of uh, 2 times, excuse me, not minus, 2 times the square root of r squared minus y squared. I don't put the sub i because I'm not in the discrete case anymore, dy. Last thing I need are my limits. What is y going to range from and to? Well, down here would be a y value of negative r. Up here would be r. So it's going to go from negative r to r. So this is the integral we need to solve. So I'm going to get some extra paper just in case because this could take a little bit of work. But first thing we notice, that form is a trig sub. So I'm going to solve in a different color so you can kind of see the difference here. So when I have this form, I want to let y equal r sine theta. And then dy is r cosine theta. So a nice problem because it uses one of our new techniques. So those need to be subbed in. So when I come down here, I can pull out the 2, it's a constant. I'm going to not do the limits yet, and I'll show you why here in a second. Square root of r squared. Now when I plug this in for y, it's going to get squared. So I'm going to have a minus r squared sine squared theta. And my dy is r cosine theta. Now, what I'm going to do with my limits is I'm going to figure out what they are in terms of theta so I don't have to come back and substitute back. So if my upper limit is r, well, when y is r equals r sine theta, 
divide both sides by r. That means 1 equals sine theta. So my upper limit is pi over 2. Similarly, I'm going to do it for the, the lower limit. Negative r equals r sine theta. And it's going to be a real similar substitution solution, except it's negative pi over 2. The other, so I'm going to be going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I don't want to have to substitute back. Now, the other thing that's going to happen, notice I've got an r squared here under the radical. We'll do one more line on here, and then we'll go over to get some more space. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I'm going to factor that out and rewrite it as r squared times 1 minus sine squared theta r cosine theta and I should have a d theta on the end here sorry and a d theta back there okay we're gonna need some more room for this guy so let's move that up and we're gonna come onto this new sheet of paper alright so equals 2 negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I can pull out that r. And this becomes the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. And then r cosine theta d theta. So I have 2. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I have an r squared here. I'm going to pull that out of the integral because it's a constant. Now, square root of cosine squared is cosine times another cosine. I am going to end up with a cosine squared theta d theta. Now, one way of solving this is with a table of integrals. Uh, I'm going to show you another way, and it's using half angle identities because cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. So what I'm going to do, this is just from our trig identities, I'm going to make that substitution. So 2 r squared, I got negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and I'm just going to sub this directly in because they're exactly equal. Cosine of 2 theta d theta. Notice what's going to happen with that 1 half and the 2, those are going to cancel, so I don't worry about that anymore. And what do we have? We have r squared. Now this one we can do piece by piece. The antiderivative of 1 is just theta. The antiderivative of cosine of 2 theta is a positive sine of 2 theta over 2. Okay. If we were taking the derivative of this, it would be a chain rule. We'd have to multiply it by 2. Taking the antiderivative, we've got to divide by 2. That's where that 2 is coming from. I kind of skipped a step in there, so you may want to do it with u substitution to see where it comes from, but for time's sake, I just went ahead and did that step for us. All right, let's see what's going to happen here when we plug in our limits. I've got r squared times pi over 2 plus sine of 2 times pi over 2 over 2, so there's my upper limit, minus when I come, actually I think I'd have enough room here, minus negative pi over 2 being plugged in for theta plus sine of 2 times negative pi over 2 over 2. Whole lot of writing. This is actually going to turn out really nice for us though because look what happens here. 2 times pi over 2 is pi. Sine of pi, 0. 2 times negative pi over 2 is negative pi. Sine of negative pi is 0. So we end up with r squared times pi over 2 minus a negative pi over 2, so plus pi over 2, which is pi. And we end up with r squared times pi, or pi r squared. Now, I know this was a long uh, derivation of the formula for area of a circle, but two things going on here. Number one, you've just seen the, error, the one, one possible derivation of the air formula for area of a circle of radius r. Two, the other thing that's going on here is we're looking at doing areas by slicing. 
So this was a little bit different slicing technique than the triangle we saw earlier. So it gives us another way of looking at how to get relationships between our variables.